Njema, I would like to reach out to you in these times of global transformation and um, meet you <laughs> in this open space between um, that which has not yet been fully completed, the old, and the new which has not yet been manifested. So we find ourselves at a certain crossroads. We don't know exactly which direction this all is going to take. So it is a great opportunity. It is a kind of portal where we can access that creative energy, Shakti and Shiva, the pure present moment awareness. So the question now is, what do we choose? This question is always, we always have this choice, but now we can very consciously practice. Do we choose to get entangled in the stories, in the media, in the politics, in the different fears, different opinions, um, all of these different hidden agendas and um, lose our ground. We are bound to lose energy, we are bound to lose focus and ground when our mind gets too much uh, involved in all of this. Or do we choose to pull our mind out from all of these stories, although they are very attractive for our mind, and, um, and really choose what do we want to create now? Because what we experience is the result of the thoughts and actions of the past. This is the karma that we are reaping now. So now, what is it that we want to create in this open portal, in this field of possibilities? What are the thoughts, what are the actions that we are going to choose to create a new future? Of course, it is important to to experience our feelings, to allow whatever wants to surface to be there and to be felt, the fears, the disappointments, the anger, maybe the relief. But as I see it, I feel that it's important not to stop there, not to get stuck there and to use this opportunity. So what is your wish for the future? What do you want to create for the future? My most burning desire is that we as humanity find our way back into harmony with nature. And I would like to make this desire into a very strong intention, strong enough to manifest. I would like us to again be guardians of mother nature, servants of mother nature not to elevate ourselves above her, but to see her as divine and to put her first. The more of us that manage to come out of the old tracks, these old ways of capitalist thinking, fear-based thinking, mm, security-oriented thinking, ego-based thinking, the more we are able to put nature first, put our spiritual integrity first, the more we can allow this planet to heal. And as Mother Earth heals, we also simultaneously heals because heal. Because whatever is outside, whatever we experience, is nothing but a reflection of, of our inner world. So in Swakriya Yoga, we have these wonderful practices with the five elements. It is a form of Bhuta Shuddhi. Bhuta means the five elements, Shuddhi means purification purification of the five elements. In Tantric philosophy, the five elements are a very central concept. They are the building blocks of creation, this world around us, our physical body. But on a subtle level, they also are very influential on our mind, our state of consciousness. So in these times, they are very essential and wonderful to work with because they have the capacity to bring us back into synchronization with nature. So all of you who have already learned these practices with us, I encourage you to practice. 
you are not alone in your efforts. We are all working together. And remember that your sadhana, your spiritual practice, you don't do it only for yourself, for your own upliftment. You uplift the whole of humanity. So for those of you who do not know the five elements, <laughs> the five tantric elements yet, um, I'm happy to give you a brief introduction. So I invite you to become aware of the Pancha Mahabhuta, the five great elements. The first element where we start is earth. In Sanskrit it is called Prithivi Tattva. So just now where you are, where you sit, Try to feel the ground. Maybe you have the feet on the ground. Feel the solidity, the stillness. Nothing moves. It is very stable. It is very quiet. Feel how the Mother Earth is holding you very securely, very patiently. These are the qualities of earth element. Patience, stability, stillness. So for us as humanity, it is very important as a whole to slow down so that we can again tune into the rhythms of nature. Take some very deep, slow breaths. And feel that your physical body is really part of this vast earth, not separate from it. The next element is water element. It is called Jal or Apaha. And um, Water element is really the art of pure surrender, which has become very rare nowadays. But uh, we know this saying, to go with the flow. So to go with the flow means that one is very easygoing, that one has the ability to adapt. So not for us humans to adapt nature to our needs, but for us to be able to adapt our surrounding, for us to adapt to nature, to be flexible, to be soft. And water element, element also teaches us to trust, to trust in life, to trust that life takes care of everything at the right time, because everything follows the natural laws, everything follows the natural rhythms, everything happens at the right time. Just right now, Become aware of your breathing. And notice how your breath has been moving all the time without your doing, without your control. You can put one hand on your heart and feel the heartbeat. Be aware of the blood streaming through your body, through your veins, just like rivers. All of this is happening by itself, without our control. Relax into this knowing that life takes care of everything. And how are we treating water? It used to be that um, the rivers were adored as, as conscious beings, as conscious entities. Nowadays, we just very conveniently have the running water in our houses. We just turn on the tap, water comes out, we turn it off, water stops. But water has this capacity, this outstanding quality to remember. It records whatever informations are surrounding it, 
our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions. And it reflects it back to us. So imagine the water that we drink, whatever it has gone through, whatever it has recorded, that goes back into our bodies. So just imagine what would happen if every time that we used water, we said thank you from our heart. Every time we turn on the tap, thank you. Every time we turn on the shower or take a bath, thank you. Every time we drink, thank you. And imagine if all of humanity would be doing this. The next element is fire element. Agni Tattva. So Agni is very important in, in these transformative times. Mm, fire reduces everything to ashes, which is not needed anymore. It transforms the old and it um, prepares and fertilizes the ground for the new to come. So fire also gives light and it gives intensity so that uh, we can see clearly and we can act clearly with focus, with clarity. And um, maybe you have noticed that uh, in our daily lives, fire has almost completely disappeared. We hardly see fire anymore. So maybe tonight you're inspired to keep all the lights off because it is really that electricity is, um, has come in the place of fire. So keep the electric light off. Instead, light some candles and connect with your inner clarity, with your ability to see through the darkness. And the next element is air element, Bayu Tattva. And um, I feel that this coronavirus pandemic is teaching us especially about air element. Uh, air element stands for the interconnectedness of things and it stands for love and compassion. No being can live without air. No being can live without connection, without love. And as this coronavirus is affecting our ability to breathe, our lungs, while it suffocates us, while it keeps us locked down. It allows the air, the earth, to breathe again. The pollution of the air is clearing. The air element has a very strong connection to our heart, this whole area, lungs and heart. And uh, it reminds us of the interconnectedness of all beings. So just put your hands on your heart. Take some deep breaths. Feel the air going in and out of your nose. Feel it how you breathe in. The air is somehow touching the heart space. Become aware that Air cannot be divided. Air cannot be separated. It's impossible to restrict it. It cannot be owned by anybody. Air is just one. In the same way that all of us, we are one. The fifth and most subtle element of all is Akash Tattva, ether element. So Akash is the empty space that holds all of this creation. And scientists have proven that even solid matter is not really solid, but consists of almost 100% empty space. So what Akash Tattva reminds us of is 
of the source of life. That all of this physical creation that we see, all of these forms, they're just coming and going. They're so fleeting. They come out of this field of potential, of potential creative energy for a short while, and they disappear back into it. And the only thing that lasts throughout eternity is what we call the soul, or you can call it God, or consciousness. There's not really any difference between all of these. So it reminds us of the source of life, of our true nature as eternal souls. And if we are aware of this truth, then we have nothing to fear, we have nothing to lose, we have nothing to hold on to, nothing to accumulate. Because after all, we can't take anything with us when we leave, except only the peace of heart and, and the love. Thank you, Jema. I invite you to chant this mantra with me together. It's one of the oldest prayers for truth, for light and for life. Om Asatoma Satagamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Shanti